Welcome to Envision More. Here, we dig deep into the insights of first-generation wealth builders, unearthing stories of passion, resilience, and relentless vision. Your host is Wayne Wagner Jr., founder of Visionary Wealth Management. So sit back and dig in. It's time to Envision More. Hey, it's Wayne Wagner with another episode of the Envision More podcast. Uh, today is a neat day because I get to share somebody from my personal life with the world. So I'm, I'm excited to have Jennifer Hancock, who is a, tra a certified travel agent with Magical Moments Vacations, uh, with me today. Uh, Jennifer has worked with May and I on trips around the world at this stage, and uh, it's been invaluable to have somebody else's set of eyes. So Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So, yeah, we're excited to dig into a little bit about how the travel industry has changed um, and, and uh, how we're seeing travel agents kind of have a, a resurgence in people's lives. We used to have the, the local uh, travel agency down the block that you would go down and, and book your airplane tickets or your rental car or your hotel or your resort stay. And, you know, I, I can still remember walking into those rooms with, you know, walls full of brochures from various resorts and all that kind of stuff. Um, now, Jen, you're obviously not old enough to have, have run a travel agency uh, back in the day. But, um, like, tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry, if you will. Sure. Uh, so... Um, I started as a travel agent in February 2018. Um, basically, what started that was that our family fell in love with cruising, specifically mm -hmm. Disney cruising. Um, so in that's 2013, an yes, it, <laughs> it was an expensive hobby. Um, so we had triplets who were eight years old at the first time um, that we took our uh, first Disney cruise. Um, and it was our first vacation where I didn't have to be on mom duty <laughs> in terms of it was our first vacation that I didn't grocery shop, cook, clean, and do laundry. And so it was just a magical experience for all of us. Um, everything was family friendly. Um, we loved, especially my daughter and I loved all of like the little Disney touches, meeting the characters, seeing the Disney shows. Um, and our kids just loved the kids clubs, which also meant that my husband and I got a little bit of couples time on our family trips. So we just love that. Um, and it, it became like a regular thing for our family to go on a Disney cruise every year. It was mm -hmm. our family Christmas gift. It started off as uh, the first couple of years, we surprised our kids with it. And then it just became like, they knew that that's what they were getting for Christmas. And we all looked forward to it. So um, I, did a lot of research on um disney cruises i just became like i i would just wanted to know everything that, that there was to know about it and share it with anybody that was interested in cruising right um one of the things that i really liked about it um was that when you look at the price of a disney cruise you think this is insanely expensive. But for our family of five, at the time that we took our first cruise, I priced out the cost of airfare to fly to Grand Cayman, which was one of our stops. And the cost of flights was more expensive than the whole cruise mm. for five of us. So I liked sharing that with people too, that it's, it's not as expensive as you think it is um, when you think about getting your family um, to these destinations that would otherwise be cost prohibitive. And um, another thing that I realized when pricing out our first Disney cruises was that it wasn't more expensive than doing the same amount of time in the parks at Disney World with, right. with the dining package. So I liked sharing that with people as well. Um, so I just started sharing, um, Disney tips with 
friends that were going um, and particularly Jason's colleagues that he worked with. And after doing that a number of times, I was getting the same feedback. You should do this for a living. Right. Um, and so, so that's how I started looking for an agency that really had a focus on Disney. And I also wanted an agency where, um, education was important because being a travel agent was brand new to me. Um, so magical moments, vacations does extensive training. And we also have a really great network where all of us, um, are on a Facebook group together. And so we freely ask questions, we collaborate together. It's just a really great agency. So I'm glad that right. that's the agency that I started with and who I'm still with today. Yeah, and, and you mentioned, uh, as we were talking before we, before we started here, you mentioned there's 400 representatives like you around the country. Um, and yes. each of you, are your own 1099 employee, each of you run your own businesses, has your own clients, magical moments creates the framework and the network and the access to all of the resorts and that kind of stuff. Is that, am I phrasing that yes. correctly? Yes, that's right. correct. So, and, and it is interesting. I mean, on, on a customer side, the idea, first of all, the idea that the, the way things were 20 or 30 or 40 years ago or, or longer, um, the way the travel industry operated, you would have kind of a, a local storefront frequently owned by a local person, you know, husband and wife often worked in those storefronts themselves. And, and they were the ones that you would go in and you would say, well, I, I think I want to go to Italy or I want to go on a cruise or I want to go to South America or whatever. And they would, you know, go do some research. Um, obviously, I mean, there was a window of time here where the internet like killed the travel industry. Um, yes. Right. Because, you know, the, the internet came on and like, I can go do my own research. I can find the resort. I can book at the resort. I can I can book my plane tickets, my rental car. I can do all those things myself. But I think what's what we're starting to see, and I think you you are a you and, and Magical Moments is a prime example of this, is that um, access to data, access to information, doesn't necessarily lead to better outcomes um, because right. the internet. You know, you almost get. You, you can get swallowed up and drown in the data of all of the different options. Um, and, and you don't have a lot of, you don't have enough wisdom to be asking the questions, you know, should I do the food package? Should I do the alcohol package? Should I do, you know, what, what are the options um, available for upgrades? You know, you know, what would make the trip a little bit more special in this way or that way? And I think that's where for May and I, um, we, now we had a personal connection with you because our kids went to the same school for a while. Um, yeah. but, um, and, and that's kind of how we met you, but, um, you know, for, for us, it was, um, you know, a, some of the, you know, so, some of the, you know, t not having the time or desire to pour into the research, number one, right. hey, we want to go as a way as a family. We want to do it reasonably. We want these dates. This is the kind of experience we want. Where should we go? Oh, well, you can do this cruise or there's this resort. Do you want to do a resort environment or do you want to do a cruise environment? You know, and so it, you you would come back to us with options. Um, and then as time go, has gone on, you're able to connect us with specialists in different areas of the world, specialists in different um um, uh, countries, uh, as it were. And then, uh, and then you would come back to us with, um, I mean, for May and I, May and I traveled for a month this year through Europe. And the big thing for me was the, 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 the transportation. So you get off this boat and you have to get to that point yes. oh, getting from point A to point B and Uber sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't and you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, right. but, uh, okay. Um, so how did, so you've spent six or seven years doing this, um, you know, and, and you, I assume you've got, you know, you've got more clients than different Wagner's at this stage. Sounds like you're, you're doing, you're almost doing this as a service to people before you started getting paid for it. Um, what's, what's been exciting about it for you? So I, it's, I think, one of the coolest jobs you can have because we all love our vacations, right? Those are our core memories. 
right? Yeah. We we love um, to look back on our vacation memories. So I think it's really special that I get to help families, friend groups, couples plan those, you know, at, my agency is called Magical Moments Vacations. So I oftentimes refer to them as our magical moments. So I really do um, enjoy having that personal touch with my clients to get to know what's important to them and to really personalize my recommendations based on the things that are highly important to them and also um, that is within their budget as well. Yeah. Um, so that's really, really special. I love, you know, hearing back from my clients afterwards, um, you know, what they loved about their trip. I, I love absolutely love seeing my clients' photos um, on Facebook, like when you and May, all of your travels throughout Italy and, and Greece, it was just yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Now, and, and um, I think it was a, about a little over a year and a half ago, we did, we went to the Maldives with the kids and that, yes. that was, that was a trip. That was, uh, you know, you talk about some core memories. I mean, we have, we have, uh, anchor memories, we have anchor, uh, moments and, and, uh, we have, uh, we have family photos that will last, you know, the rest of our lives from that trip. Um, you know, and that kind of stuff. And, um, for Bryce and I, uh, hooking up to five and six foot sharks, uh, on a hand line, uh, on the back of the over the water, um, bungalows that we were staying in, um, which, which was not sanctioned by the resort, by the way, we were doing that after dark. Um, yeah. uh, so we brought, we brought hand lines with steel leaders with us from, from the States. And, uh, we would, we would raid the, the lunch buffet for food at the end of lunch, we'd take it to go box and we'd use that to chum the waters and bring the sharks in at, at uh, sunset. So we've got, uh, we have video and pictures of, uh, like wrangling arm wrestling five and six foot sharks. And, uh, that was, that's a magical moment. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of your Maldives trip, that was so much fun to plan with you and May. And, um, I have never been to the Maldives. So while typically my trips are, uh, that I help with plan, planning are places that I've been to many times that I have a lot of personal experience with. But um, when May reached out and, and said, we want to go to the Maldives, um, I knew where to go to because Magical Moments Vacations has relationships with suppliers and um, they have agents who that is their one main specialty. So it was neat to partner with our supplier with one of their Maldives specialists to make sure that um, all of the recommendations that I was passing along to you in May were, I knew that you were gonna love those resorts that you went yeah. to. Yeah, it was, it was, and it was really was a fantastic trip. Now the Maldives was a, was a negotiated settlement with our son because we had taken uh, we had taken a long family vacation to Europe when my, our daughter graduated high school, and uh, when uh, uh, and this is talking a little bit out of school here, but when Bryce went to graduate high school, we said, "Well, where do you want to go?" And he said, "Bora Bora." Well, Bora Bora was like five plane trips. It was going to cost us fifty thousand dollars for to get four of us there for a week to a resort that was not all inclusive. And I was right. like, I don't think I even want to see the lunch menu at that resort. Because if it cost me $50,000 for four of us to be there for a week, like there's going to be $127 cheeseburgers on the lunch menu. Right. So it was just, <laughs> I don't think I want to see that. So we, we yeah. negotiated to go to the Maldives. And, and meanwhile, we were, son, how, what, what is it like Maldives, Bora Bora? Like, what is it about that? And, and he said, well, I'm pretty sure there's not one expletive uh, museum in that place in, in Bora Bora or the Maldives. Um, and, uh, he said, because when CJ graduated, we went to Europe and all we did was walk from one museum to the next museum to the next pile of rocks. And I didn't want to do that at all. So it was, uh, it was indeed a fantastic, uh, after memory for us though. Um, so Jen, we've talked we've talked a little bit about how the, you know the internet killed the traditional, the historically traditional um, 
travel industry, we're seeing this resurgence in uh, travel agents because people need wisdom and knowledge, right? The internet is knowledge. You're able to bring the wisdom, the expertise, um, and, and, and the insight into what works, what doesn't work, what'll work within my budget, what won't give me pointers, you know, connect me with other people. Um, and I mean, it, it is fascinating and, and it's probably more of a statement than a question, but when we think about the gig economy, right, when we think about jobs that, you know, when we say technology is going to kill jobs, technology does indeed kill the local travel agent. Uh, or travel agency, but it creates hundreds or thousands of new jobs for people who want to take all of that knowledge and be a filter for their customers, be a filter for their clients. Um, and that's what I find really interesting. And it creates an opportunity for you to, as a travel agent to not just be an employee of an agency, but now you run your own business. And, and now, you know, and, and we know that you and I both know that the tax code in America is built for business owners. And so, <laughs> it's, you know, you you end up way better off uh, in this business doing this as a 1099 uh, employee contractor versus being a W-2 employee because you get, you know, you get to leverage the tax code in your favor for your benefit. So. And if you're not, I mean, I, I've seen some of those trips that you and Jason take. I, there's, I'm, I'm 100% sure those are research trips for you to get to know the places That's that you're right. trying to uh, send your clients to. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I always say that I have the best homework. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Having this is my career, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think just thinking back on, you know, how are travel agents still able to, like, because I, I do get this question when someone hears me say I'm a travel agent and they'll say, are, are travel agents even a thing anymore? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think that the reason that we are a thing is that um, we can offer like personal, relational, um, uh, a personal and, and relational piece to planning your travel. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, you can book your Walt Disney World trip on your own in minutes if you know what exactly what you want, or you know you can book your cruise on your own, or you know any any trip. That is a hundred percent true. So, you know, if if that were the only piece of it, then I would be out of a job. But um, it is connecting with my clients, getting to know what's important to them. Um, and then making personalized recommendations based on their budget and and what's on their wish list, what is going to give them those magical moments. Um, and yeah, I think that 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 really is the biggest reason why travel agents are around. And then the other big piece that most people don't understand is that our commission, which is how travel agents are primarily paid, um, our commission is already built into the price of your trip that you book on your own. Okay. So if you book your cruise on your own or your Disney World vacation um, or your vacation package, or even your resort hotel stay, um, you are paying for a service that you're not getting. Mm -hmm. So that I think is a big piece that people don't realize. Yeah, that was one um, of the questions I was gonna ask you today is how are you paid? So yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So most travel agents like myself are paid just by uh, the commission that were paid um, from the travel suppliers. After COVID, some agents have moved to um, charging a planning fee as well. Um, but I do not charge a planning fee except in very extreme, like extremely rare cases. Um, if a client came to me and asked me to book airfare on its own, that is one where my agency has a policy that we charge a fee for that because um, airlines do not pay travel agents a commission. Right, right. So that would be one instance. Um, another instance would be if a client came to me and asked for help with planning their Walt Disney World itinerary 
but they have booked all of the components on their own. So they already have mm. their tickets and their hotel, that gotcha. sort of thing. Right. But I always disclose that information up front if there would be a fee involved. Okay. No, that's that's helpful because and and that certainly makes sense because ultimately the commission is paying for your time uh, investment for, for helping me plan that. And if I walk in and say, well, I've already bought my tickets, I already booked my hotel, I already have everything. I just need you to help me plan my itinerary. What what parks am I going to go to, and what ride, what order am I going to ride the rides? Um, now I'm at, now I'm a, a, attempting to access your expertise and experience with those parks, and there's no place for you to get compensated for that. So. That, uh, that certainly makes sense. So good stuff. Um, and the, the cruises, I mean, talk to me about the cruises because we, we've done a Disney cruise and mm -hmm. we had an absolutely amazing experience. Um, we met a young guy on that cruise that was probably one of the best salespeople we've ever met in our lives. He was, he was selling, uh, the wine packages in the restaurant okay. and, uh, <laughs> And I ended up, you know, grabbing coffee with him a couple of times on the cruise just because he was such an exceptional salesperson and asking him uh, about his life and connecting. He was from South Africa. He and his dad um, were starting an Uber service down in, in South Africa. In South Africa, you buy the car and then hire the driver to drive the car around for Uber. So, um, so he and his dad were building a fleet of Uber cars that they owned. Um, but I had a conversation with, I went and found his boss and uh, I had a conversation with his boss. I said, he's got to be your best salesperson. He said, Wayne, that, that kid has been the best salesperson in that position on this ship every single cruise since he got on it two and a half years ago. Wow. And I said, why the hell do you still have him selling wine? You have people on this cruise that are selling hundred thousand dollar vacation packages and, right. and, and, you know, long-term Disney relationships and you've got him stuck selling wine. You should, you could change the trajectory of that kid's life. If you right. get, you'd put him in a position to get bigger commissions just because he's selling higher ticket items. Right. And, uh, and so, and then I went and found the HR director on the cruise ship and I wrote a letter of recommendation saying the same thing to her. So I, I haven't connected with that kid in a couple of years at this stage, but it, it is amazing. You meet people from all over the world. You meet people that are just ha have had a, a tremendously different uh, background and experience than, than we have. Yes. Um, uh, May and I met a, a woman in the, uh, the spa on our last cruise in the Mediterranean that was uh, she was from England and, and, uh, and she was a massage therapist, but, you know, we had a great conversation about the trajectory of her life and how this was really a, a resume building event. She was taking a year to work on a cruise ship and, and, you know, building, building a resume so that she could go back home and, and land more permanent work in the, in the career that she wanted. Um, it was just really, really neat to interact with people on these cruises from all over the world. So, and that's just the, the staff, the people that you meet are, are neat too. So. <laughs> Exactly. That was uh, also a favorite of our families was getting to know our servers in the dining rooms. Um, with Disney Cruise Line, you have the same servers that mm -hmm. follow you throughout your entire cruise. And it was always hard for the kids to say goodbye on the last night because you do get attached to them. And we, we d do have contact info for some of our servers that we yeah. were able to stay in touch with. Yeah, it's it's neat to connect with people like that and, and, and that format. And um, you mentioned, I mean, for anyone who, you know, for anyone listening here, um, you mentioned on the front end of this, you got into this because you guys did a, a cruise and it was the first time you didn't have to be in total mom mode the whole time. And I know that, and, and Disney may be a higher, maybe a higher end, but the whole process of getting on the boat and, um, and, and having mom and dad not quite have to be full on fully engaged mom and mom and dad mode the whole time. Um, that is a huge advantage to cruising. So, Absolutely. And, yes. Yeah. And, and it is, you know, me. yeah. I was just going to say, and it's a little easier for mom to exhale when she knows the kids are at kids club rather than we're in a Disney park and one of the three is not here. Where are they? Right. So. Definitely. Yeah. 
Good stuff. Um, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in the travel industry these days? Um, are you seeing more people do cruising, more people do Caribbean, Central America, Europe, I mean, Asia? What, what, are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've been seeing a lot more interest in European travel in the last few years. I think after COVID, everyone stayed close to home. Um, and did a lot of U.S.-based trips at first, yeah. trips to the parks. And then when cruising opened, then everyone did a lot of cruising. Um, and so the phase right now is everyone is ready to go to, to Europe. So yeah. I'm seeing a lot of those kind of trips, uh, longer European cruises that allow you to stop in multiple um, destinations, um, and also guided tours where, you know, it's a longer trip where you can see Scotland and Ireland together, um, seeing a lot of those. Okay. And then this is completely opposite of that, but I'm seeing a lot of last minute travel hmm. where, um, I think there's some people that just aren't ready to plan far in advance, but we'll reach out a month out. I'm okay. ready to plan my summer vacation. Okay. So I've had a lot of that this summer. Great. It's the middle of July. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's been interesting. We, um, because May and I spent, uh, a, a, like I said, about a month bouncing around Europe and, uh, I think 13 days of that was on a cruise and we had eight, uh, Eight different stops. Uh, one of them we skipped. We stayed on the boat, um, but uh, it was it was interesting to see. Like we were in Santorini, and we talked to some of the shop owners there, uh, some of the store owners, and and the, the store owners, of course, love the tourists, uh, especially in, in in the main population centers. Um, but they said, you know, also that during the summertime, they've seen in the last few years, they've seen that the number of cruise ships in the harbor has gone from an average of two to three to sometimes in a harbor that have eight to nine cruise ships uh, coming wow. in, in a single day, which in Santorini, like we were there early and there were two cruise ships and it was it, it, it was uh, uncomfortably full. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, completely obliterated full, but I can't imagine going from two cruise ships to eight or nine in July and August. And I think that I wouldn't want to be on Santorini. Um, so right. it's, that's, that's a little too much for me. So, um, one of the other things I was thinking about was you, you, uh, you get to know your clients and as they're planning the trips and, um, like if you're planning a Disney trip for my wife and daughter, you can plan for them to be in the, in the, in the park every day. If you plan yeah. a trip for me and you plan for me to be in the park every day, we're going to fight. Like, that's right. not, like <laughs> that is not my jam. <laughs> like I, if I do a day in a park, I need a day at rest. I need to be able to go, you know, let's go, let's go for a ride. Let's go fishing. Let's sit on a beach somewhere. Let's maybe buy a pool somewhere. Let's read a couple of books. Let's get away from people. You know, so Exactly. Yep. Yeah. It's good to know some that of the stuff going in Disney, some of their, some of their new, newer rides. I mean, May and CJ look, and, and again, for, for those listening, if you want, if you want travel tips, uh, you know, on this stuff, you, if you get Jennifer Hancock and my wife, May and my daughter, CJ in, in a room together, the three of them will hook you up like nobody's business with all the secrets and, and gimmicks going into Disney parks. But, you know, cause, and, and I say that just because my wife and daughter have figured out how to make a trip to Disney, literally a day trip from Philadelphia. So they leave at yeah. 6 a.m., they're home by midnight, and they spend the day in the Disney park. And they have figured out how to do that. Thankfully for my wallet, they don't try to do it every week, um, but <laughs> it is a thing and it can be done. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it, it is. Uh, so please feel free to connect up with uh, Jennifer and my wife and daughter if you want to, uh, if you're listening to this and you want some feedback and input on that. So, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, my husband also yeah, feels the same way as you about uh, the parks. Um, so I take either my daughter and we do a mother daughter trip to Disney World, the same as May and CJ. 
And I've done mother son trips where I've taken both of our, our boys. And it's just a really special time to do that. Gotcha. And then I even have some adult friends that we do like adult trips to Disney, which is fun because we yep. just act like kids yep. <laughs> for the few days that we're there. Yep. Well, and, and there's some of that stuff that is just absolutely, it really is fun to, there, there's so much thought and effort put into like the Epcot World Showcase where like I right. could spend almost a week just going through the, just going through the little shops and the, and, the, and right. seeing the, um, just how detailed they are about bringing in the d different cultures from around the world. And, and it's just absolutely fascinating. And then you get into some of the, uh, some of the um, activities and the rides and that kind of stuff. And they're just I mean, the technology has advanced to a point where it's just as, as, as excuse me, absolutely immersive and absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. So it's uh, yep. it's magical even for adults. So ex yep. except the people. So <laughs> <laughs> it can be extra peopley sometimes. Yep, it can be extra peopley sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think the last time they I, I, we got there, I was there. Um, there was a new new attraction, and we had to get to the park super early because you had to go on an app on your phone once you got yeah. inside the park to get a, a ticket to get in line for that ride. Otherwise, and if you weren't there an hour before the park opened, there was no way you were going to get you were going to make it on, right. on that, that that day. So it was right. So and that has changed uh, a couple of times, and it's getting ready to change again, which okay. is another reason to use a travel agent because things are constantly changing. Right. So instead of having to go on and take in all of this information on your own, your travel agent can give you the Cliff Notes version right. <laughs> to get you right. ready. Yeah. Good stuff. So we're going to come to our, the end of our time in just a little bit here, but. Um, uh, what is the, uh, what, what are a couple of pointers that you would ask somebody to think about? So let's, let's pick on Europe for a minute. If I'm going to Europe, what are a couple of things that you want me remembering, like as I'm traveling or as I'm planning to travel? So when you're traveling internationally, there's quite a few things to remember. Um, one, check your passport. Make sure that your expiration date is at least six months past the end of the dates that you plan to be traveling. Okay. Um, and if that's not the case, you want to renew your passport as soon as possible. Um, the turnaround time has been pretty good lately, but um, this time last year, passports were taking a very long time. Um, so definitely check your passports first thing. Um, you also want to think about the currency where you're traveling. And you also want to check with your credit card company. Um, ideally, you want to travel with a credit card that has no foreign transaction fees. Mm -hmm. um, and even think about having a travel a credit card that gives you travel rewards if you're planning to do a lot of traveling. Right. Um, and I would say um, I like to travel with a minimal amount of cash and use my credit card whenever possible. Um, so you do want to have some currency on hand for things that, you know, places where you can't use your credit card, but I figure on using my credit card most places. Right. Um, you also want to be thinking about um, if there are any entry requirements, um, after COVID, a lot of places, like even in the Caribbean, have um, a, a form that you have to fill out online to apply for entry ahead of time. Um, so you want to make sure that you know about that. And you want to consider having um, purchasing a travel protection plan if you're going to leave the country. And they offer comprehensive plans that cover um, if your trip is delayed, um, if your flight is canceled, if your luggage is damaged, um, if you have to cancel because of you know medical reasons ahead of time. And another big thing that it covers when you're outside of the country is it provides medical coverage. Right. Uh, yeah. So 
those are big ones. Um, the other thing I like to check the Department of State's website to look at what their travel advisories are for the country that you're planning to visit as well. Okay. Gotcha. Now, th those are all really good things to, to think about, and I appreciate that, that insight perspective. Um, is there anything else you want to make sure we cover today before I ask you a final question? Any, any other areas that you think we should touch on when it comes to travel? Hmm. I, th I think the big thing um, when just thinking about um, traveling and, you know, planning your own trips versus working with a travel agent would be um, remember that travel agents generally um, are at zero cost to you. Um, they can save you a lot of time. Um, the average amount of time that is spent planning a trip is five hours. Um, and a lot of couples don't have five hours of time to, mm -hmm. to carve out to plan their trip. Um, so if you have a relationship with a travel advisor that can work with you, like with a lot of my clients, we do most of our conversing over email because that's how we are today, right? We, yeah. we want to be able to um, get information to each other and have the ability to reply when it's a good time for us. Um, texting as well is another big one. Um, so I think just keep in mind that um, if you're interested in working with a, a travel agent, that they can really help you in that way, that you know, you, the information is at your fingertips. Like I try to be very responsive with my clients when they have questions. Um, you don't have to call into a 1-800 number and sit on hold. Um, right. And if you wanna make changes to your vacation package, I'm the one that is gonna call for you to make those changes so that you're not waiting on hold to do those kind of things. Um, so I think it's just remembering that, um, there isn't a fee to work with a travel agent, um, that we can save you time and that we can offer expertise because we have been to these locations. So we can offer you firsthand knowledge and provide tips for the places that you're going to. That's great. Those are, those are great, uh, great points. And then, uh, and I was going to say that this is the idea that even if I'm already taking the time off and I'm spending the money to go on a trip, if I can work with somebody who has a bigger view of the world and has seen more than I have and, and knows more than I do, then I may be able to spend the same amount of money, same amount of time, and also get to see different places in the world that I, I have not experienced. So, um, now that's not a, uh, that, that's not a that's not an encouragement to not go to the Jersey Shore, especially Ocean City, especially because we own a bunch of businesses on the Ocean City boardwalk. So uh, please feel free to excluding everybody. Please still go to Ocean City, New Jersey. But if you're not going to go to Ocean City, call Jen and uh, she, she can hook you up anywhere else in the world. New Jersey too. That's right. <laughs> No, that's good stuff. Jen, um, I always ask people at the end of, of these uh, interviews, um, what does in the idea of envisioning more mean to you? So I would ask, ask you that. Uh, what, do, what does envision more mean to, to Jennifer Hancock? Am I thinking of like my industry as a, like helping with planning travel? Sure. sure. We, can, we can zero in on that. <laughs> okay. Um, I would say um, making sure that I'm, you know, offering uh, vacation ideas to my clients that is um, very tailored to what their interests are, um, and just trying to make it so that you know, because there are so many vacations that we could choose that we would we could have a great time on you know i i know per like personally you could put me on any cruise and i'll have a great time right, right, right. <laughs> but um that is really unique to what that particular family wants or that honeymoon couple is um it, that it's gonna really make it a magical thing that's um 
is something that they love. Like if it's, I'm, I'm thinking of your family, like you guys love deep sea fishing. So when there are opportunities to add that um, or to specifically recommend destinations that is known for that, um, that that just really, you know, brings the trip up a notch. Yeah. Absolutely. Now that's good stuff. And I know I, I threw that, you know, that curveball here at the end of the, the interview. So, uh, Jennifer Hancock with uh, Magical Moments Vacations. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, on, on the Envision More podcast. And um, it, we'll, we'll put all the in the notes section of the podcast. We'll put your contact information so that listeners can look you up and, and connect for their next trip. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me today, Wayne. Thank you for listening to the Envision More podcast with Wayne Wagner Jr. of Visionary Wealth Management. We hope you were encouraged and inspired by the conversation today. If you want to dig deeper into the show notes or Wayne's work at Visionary, you can find us at envisionmore.com. That's Envision with a Z. Advisory services are provided through Wealth Plan Investment Management. Wealth Plan Investment Management and Visionary Wealth Management are separate entities. The content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The information in this material is not intended as tax or legal advice. Please consult legal or tax professionals for specific information regarding your individual situation. The opinions and material provided are for general information and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Thanks for listening.